Welcome to my video series on juice fasting. In this video series, we will go over the many details that come to the surface when doing a juice fast. As some of you already know, and many of you will discover in this video series, a juice fast might seem complicated at first, but turns out to be easy to do, enjoyable, and above all, memorable throughout your entire life. Before we go any further, I'd like to explain that I have done over 200 days of juice fasting myself if you exclude the breaking the fast periods. These 200 days include a 119 day juice fast, a 57 day juice fast, a current 21 day juice fast, and a couple of shorter 3 to 4 day juice fasts. Everything discussed in this video series is based on my own experience, those of others I have talked to or coached, and the research I've done myself. I advise you to further research everything that will be discussed in this video series and build on your own experiences. As a wise man once said, trust nothing but your own experiences. In this video series, we will look at a juice fast in its totality. As you can imagine, this will take quite some time to go over. Thus, I have decided to make this a multi-part video series. At the beginning of each part, or video, you will find a summary of what subjects will be covered. You can also find a timestamp overview in the description box. At the end of each video, I will detail what subjects will be touched upon in the next video. Each video will have two or more chapters, just like a book will, and each chapter will deal with specific subjects. This video will contain two chapters. The following subjects will be covered by chapter 1. What is a juice fast and what might its purpose be? What does going the distance mean and what bodily systems must you pay attention to? How does one choose and acquire the right juicer and how do you set up a realistic budget? Chapter 2 will go over how much to drink, what to drink and how to set up a proper juicing schedule. During this video, you might hear background noises such as wind, a creaking tree or perhaps the distant noise of a car passing by in the background. This video is being recorded in my car in the woods. Perhaps a happy bird will make its presence noticed as well. Or for example a dog. I do not know if you could hear this or not. I have no influence over these elements and I have decided to leave them in the audio. I am working with limited equipment and I am sure you can understand their presence. I have of course taken action to make sure that nothing too severe will distract us from the subject matter at hand in this video. You will also sometimes hear me breathe, which I suppose is a good thing, and make some noises when moving. As I stated before, this video has chapters just like a book will. The audio in this video has been spoken by me as if reading a book. Therefore this video aims to be more of an audio book than anything else. I know there are people who like to listen to something in the background whilst doing something else at the same time. This video series will provide you with just that. I also know there are people who like to actually watch a video whilst listening to the information presented. Therefore I have added video footage that will move along with the audio for the viewers amongst us that prefer visual input as well. I have done my best to make this as interesting as possible. Lastly, I am not a native English speaker and my pronunciation on specific words will sometimes be a little off. I trust in your understanding for this. I know I said lastly, but I still like to say that if you have any questions or anything you like to add, that you can do so in the comments. There will also be a pinned comment with links to my website, specific content I refer to in this video and other useful links and details. I promise. We will now start. Chapter 1. What is a juice fast and how do you prepare for it? What is a juice fast? A juice fast is a term used to describe a period in which a person abstains from all solid foods and drinks nothing but freshly squeezed juices for an extended period of time. A juice fast is also commonly known as a solid food vacation or a juice feast. These latter two names usually flow better with the fasting crowd who like to make a point that a juice fast isn't a fast by definition since one still consumes caloric substances. For contextual sake, we will leave that argument alone in this video series. For the perceptive viewers or listeners amongst us, it might have come to mind that a solid food vacation is an interesting term and could actually mean a couple of different things. Namely, a solid food vacation on nothing but freshly squeezed juices, a solid food vacation on nothing but water, also known as a water fast, or a solid food vacation where one consumes neither juice nor water, which is called a dry fast. In this video series, we will focus on the solid food vacation that is performed on nothing but freshly squeezed juices, which we will call a juice fast from now on. Where a water fast and dry fast take away caloric intake completely, a juice fast does not. During a juice fast, a person will still consume calories and nutrients, albeit in liquid form. During a juice fast, one usually drinks 4 to 8 liters or 1 to 2 gallons of juice daily. This difference leads to further subsequent differences in the fasting experience. During a juice fast, autolysis, which is a self-digesting mode of the body, will not kick in like it will do with a water fast, for example. 
since the person in question will still consume calories and nutrients daily. This means that during a juice fast, you will have, in general, more energy than when doing a water fast. Furthermore, since you will still be consuming calories and nutrients throughout the juice fast, you will also provide your body with the nutrients it needs to perform cleansing and detoxification tasks. A good example of this is glutathione, which is an enzyme the liver uses to perform a toothpaste process in which it neutralizes and eliminates toxins. Although you still consume calories and nutrients by drinking freshly squeezed juices, you will take away the body's burden for digestion by not consuming the insoluble fiber. The juice extractor machine will do the job for you by separating the fiber from the juice. There are of course further differences that would take up an entire video series on their own, but I'm sure you get the point by now. To summarize, a juice fast is a period in which a person abstains from all solid foods and drinks nothing but freshly squeezed juices for an extended period of time while still meeting their caloric and nutritious needs. What is the purpose of a juice fast? Now that we have established what a juice fast means, it is time to look at what the purpose of a juice fast is. Since we abstain from all solid foods during a juice fast, the general purpose of a juice fast becomes clear very quickly. The purpose of a juice fast is to give the body a rest from all the food processing it has been doing over the last few years or even decades. This means that the digestive tract and digestive systems will get a proper prolonged rest from having to digest food all the time. In our day and age, the majority of people tend to eat throughout the entire day. Most people wake up and eat breakfast first thing in the morning. They will continue with a snack around 10 or 11 a.m. and move on to lunch around noon. Afterwards, they eat another snack, which is in between lunch and dinner. And dinner usually involves dessert too. From the moment people open their eyes in the morning and until the moment they close them again at night, they consume food, and food consumes them mentally. Of course, there are exceptions and extremes on both ends, but the average person eats the entire day. Most people forget that this puts an enormous strain on the body's digestive systems, especially when we consider what the average person eats every single day for months and years or even decades on end. A juice fast will take away this burden completely and will help to get rid of anything that might have gotten stuck throughout the years of enthusiastic eating or even gluttony. We must consider that what the majority of people eat it's not suited to our anatomy and will cause problems when we consume it on a daily basis for years on end. You will be surprised how many meals might have been backed up inside your system or those of others. By taking away the burden of digestion on a temporary basis, the body is able to redirect its energy to cleaning and possibly even healing itself. Furthermore, by drinking 4 to 8 liters or 1 to 2 gallons of freshly squeezed juices daily, you will also flush the body's two primary bathrooms, namely the colon and the lymphatic system but more on this later. By drinking 4 to 8 liters or 1 to 2 gallons of freshly squeezed juices daily, you will effectively do the following. You will rehydrate the uneliminated waste matter in the digestive tract so that it can be pooped out of the body. You will give your body the time and operational freedom to redirect its otherwise occupied digestive energy to cleaning out your lymphatic system and any type of organ or tissue that is in need of repair or cleansing. You will redirect the body's energy to eliminate toxins such as, but not limited to, chemicals, heavy metals, acid residues from unnatural foods, or metabolic byproducts, etc. You will rehydrate the tissues of the body and raise the overall water percentage of the body. You will raise your biophoton level, which is a measurement for stored sunlight energy in the nucleus of your cells. There are, of course, other things that will be done by performing a juice fast. However, these previously mentioned aspects are the major elements at play when performing a juice fast. What does going the distance mean? Now that we have concluded what a juice fast means and what the purpose of a juice fast is, it is time to answer another important question which no doubt will be rising in your mind by now. Namely, how long should you actually do a juice fast for? This is a tricky question by definition, as there is no right or wrong answer. A juice fast in principle is a very beneficial thing to do in the grand scheme of things. Not to mention that simply adding freshly squeezed juices to your daily routine will yield results on its own. But a juice fast has, as is the case with many things, an ultimate goal. This ultimate goal is what is called going the distance. Going the distance means that you go on a juice fast for a prolonged period of time until you stop pooping solid waste matter. You will most likely by now give way to the following question. But if I drink only freshly squeezed juices, I will stop having solid bowel movements pretty quick, right? That is indeed an interesting question and you would be inclined to think so on first thought. However, you will be amazed at how much uneliminated waste matter there is inside of us humans. Most of what humans eat 
they must first cook and alter by use of fire. We might have adapted somewhat to digesting these foods, but from an anatomical standpoint, we were never designed for them. To illustrate this point, I raise you the following question. Why would you need to cook these items if nature intended you to eat them in the first place? These cooked foods are generally low in water content and take a long time to go through us, with certain foods topping the list at 72 hours of needed quote-unquote digestion time. To revisit the example of the eating habits of the majority of people, this would mean eating these types of foods with these long bowel transit times, four to six times a day, day in and out, month after month, year after year. It doesn't take a mathematical genius to conclude that on any given three-day period, the average human has roughly 12 to 15 meals in their system at the minimum. This is a huge digestive burden on the body and it will leave its marks. One of the colon's jobs is to preserve the precious water from our foods and utilize it for our body and its tissues. When consuming great quantities of already low water content foods, such as cooked foods, which the colon will purge of water even further, we create the situation in which we have highly dehydrated digestive waste matter moving through our body like a snail. Now imagine adding to this situation four to six times a day on a daily basis. To push this point home further, I would like to refer to the autopsy of Elvis Presley as one example. In his digestive system, they found an enormous amount of uneliminated waste matter. To be exact, 20 kilograms or 45 pounds. And his bowels were almost twice the size of what they were supposed to be. Now you might say, this is just an example of one glutton overdoing it. I mean, he died on his toilet. To this I would answer, I know of slender young men in their 20s and 30s, myself included, who had solid waste matter come out of them for three to four months straight. I will leave links to their videos detailing their analysis of these solid movements in a pinned comment. To conclude, by drinking freshly squeezed juices for a prolonged period of time, you will rehydrate the uneliminated waste matter inside your digestive system. Once this dried up fecal matter absorbs enough water weight from the juices, it will start to release or break off and is able to be pooped out. The purpose of going the distance is to effectively drink freshly squeezed juices until the last of this uneliminated waste matter has been pooped out and one starts passing nothing but juices or fluid movements. Evaluating your body and its systems. Now that we know what a juice fast is and its purpose is clear and we also know what going the distance means, it is time to evaluate the body and its systems. When doing a juice fast, the body will be able to utilize more of its energy to start effectively cleaning out its lymphatic system, tissues, and for example its organs. This means the body will start to process and eliminate larger amounts of chemicals. These include, but are not limited to, heavy metals, acid residues from unnatural foods, or for example metabolic byproducts. For the sake of this video series, we shall call these toxins from now on. The body will need the support of its organs of elimination in order to properly and safely process and eliminate these toxins and remove them from the body. If these are not properly supported or up for the task, the body will look for alternative channels of elimination, such as the skin, the nose and sinus areas, or for example the lungs. When these alternative channels of elimination are used, it creates what is called a cleansing reaction. The major organs of elimination that one must focus on are the kidneys and the liver. One of the kidney's main functions is to filter the body and remove wastes, toxins and other non-wanted residues from the body. It does so by moving these compounds out of the body by utilizing the urine. When the kidneys are damaged or do not properly filter, it can cause serious problems. The body will then not be filtered properly to begin with, but it also means that the body will look for other ways to get rid of wastes the kidneys are now not processing through proper filtration. This means you will get cleansing reactions. This again simply means the body looks for alternative channels of elimination. In case of the kidneys, this is usually the skin, which is sometimes referred to as the third kidney for this very reason. As you can imagine, the skin is therefore one of the biggest eliminative organs in the body. There are a couple of things you can do in order to get the kidneys to filter. Whatever route you choose is completely up to you and it will require further research in order to do it properly or to determine if it would be safe for you to do so. In short, you can try dry fasting up to 24 hours, you can try specific herbs, choose fasting in general, or drinking specific water such as reverse osmosis water, which supposedly filters the kidneys well. From my own experiences, my kidneys start filtering after a dry fast of about 24 hours, and especially after drinking a lot of lemon ginger blast. The lemon ginger blast is a specific juice recipe that worked wonders for me. If your kidneys are compromised, you must also look at ways of diminishing the burdens placed on them during a juice fast. The liver. 
The liver is an organ that also filters the body, but in this case, the blood. In order to support the liver, one can drink a lot of juices with glutathione in it, which is an enzyme the liver uses to perform a two-phase process by which it neutralizes and eliminates toxins. Watermelon, for example, is highest in glutathione and is one of the best juices to drink when trying to support the liver. There are, of course, also herbs one can use to support and stimulate the liver with. It, of course, goes without saying that when you have proper kidney filtration, it takes a big burden off the liver in general, and vice versa. If your liver is compromised, you must also look at ways of diminishing the burdens placed on it during the juice fast. Another organ that needs specific support is the gallbladder. The gallbladder is an organ that sits underneath the liver and stores bowel from the liver. The gallbladder needs about 10 grams of fat a day in order to dump its wastes. It is therefore advisable to consume at least one tablespoon of a form of an essential fatty acid. Usually people take this in the form of hemp or flax oil. We will revisit this specific supplementation later. Another way to support almost every organ of elimination that we have is to sweat on a regular basis, preferably daily. There is a reason why almost all of our lymph nodes are on the surface near the skin. The body removes a lot of waste matter from the lymphatic system through sweating. This is why the skin is also referred to as the third kidney or one of the biggest eliminative organs in the body. Sweating daily will lighten the burden on the other organs of elimination by eliminating lymphatic waste matter through the skin. The last point I would like to touch upon when it comes to examining the body and its systems is that of oral health. When I embarked upon my first juice fast, I had no idea of how important it is to take proper care of your teeth during a juice fast. You might now start to scratch your head and play the following line in your head. Well, of course it is. How could you have overseen this? Well, what I mean with proper teeth care is a far more expanded oral health routine than what most of us are following on a daily basis. When I did my first juice fast, I simply brushed my teeth at the end of the day like I would normally do when eating. The only real precaution I took was drinking my juices with a straw so that the juices would bypass my teeth somewhat. I have thought of this as being more than adequate for my oral health. I was proven wrong fairly quickly. When you drink four or more liters of freshly squeezed juices on a daily basis, you literally bombard your teeth with an avalanche of concentrated nutrition. Some of this will remain on your teeth as residue. If this is left to colonize your teeth for the entirety of the day and is only dealt with at one short one to two minute brushing session at night, then it can create serious problems. In my own case, I developed extremely sensitive teeth to the point of not being able to brush them at all. To make matters worse, I already had somewhat damaged teeth to begin with which in my case developed in my early teenage years. Although I have not been able to visually determine whether this is the case, I am pretty sure I have in some way damaged my teeth with my first long juice fast, simply by my own lack of proper oral care. However, what I did determine visually, and this was not that hard to do, was that my teeth became very yellow during my first juice fast. You might now start to think, this juice fasting business doesn't sound like the way to a proper wide smile of pleasantry, and you would be completely wrong in thinking so. Most people I talk to improve their dental health on a juice fast considerably as they actually thought about proper oral care. Let us go over the basics of proper oral care during a juice fast one by one. Before we delve into them, however, I would like to explain that all of the following basics I have received as advice during my second juice fast. And in the beginning of my second juice fast, I was plagued with the exact same issues I had during my first one. Ever since employing these basics, my oral health improved dramatically and I haven't seen any of the issues I had before revisit me. So let us now examine these basics. Firstly, you could rinse your mouth with water after every juice. This action alone can save many a teeth from becoming a wall of plaque. It is best to rinse your mouth no sooner than 10 minutes after you consumed your juices, since enzyme activity will still be processing what just passed through your mouth. Simply take a big gulp of water and swash it around in your mouth and of course spit it out. Secondly, you could brush your teeth lightly with a soft toothbrush after every juice. The main objective here is not to let the plaque form on your teeth and I simply use water when doing this. A word of advice though, when you want to start doing this, do not start brushing like a maniac and use a lot of pressure and force. If you do this after you drink juice, you could actually damage your teeth. It is therefore advisable to brush your teeth very lightly and to do so no sooner than 10 to 15 minutes after juice has been consumed. Thirdly, you could use a form of an abrasive compound to thoroughly clean your teeth once or twice a day. When I started doing this during my second juice fest, I saw my teeth sensitivity disappear within mere days. Not to mention my teeth becoming very clean and white overall within a short period of time. I was amazed at the results. Again, you must be careful here and not brush like a maniac. 
but simply lightly brush your teeth or apply as much force as you feel is needed. Abrasive compounds that come to mind are for example baking soda, make sure to get one without aluminium in it, or for example raw cacao powder. The latter is one of my favorites, as it literally tastes like you are brushing your teeth with chocolate. Raw cacao powder is also a powerful antioxidant. My personal routine entails brushing my teeth with baking soda at noon and with raw cacao powder at night. I do not use much of both compounds, I simply add a little bit to my toothbrush and brush lightly. Fourthly, you can start oil pooling using something like coconut oil. Some people like to use other oils as well, but I have no personal experience with those, so I can't say whether to use those or not. It is important to get a good quality oil that is cold pressed and preferably as extra extreme over the top virgin as you can get. When we look at our mouth and teeth, we see that it is inhabited by many little creatures we can't see with the naked eye. There are also many elements in these that are soluble in water or only in fat. We want to get rid of both of these in order to maintain our oral health and let nothing pile up to the point of damage or destruction. So we will use an oil such as coconut oil to get rid of the things we can't get rid of by rinsing our mouth with water. The proper way to do this is to take a tablespoon of coconut oil and put it inside your mouth. At first this will most likely be a lump, but the coconut oil will pretty quickly melt because of the temperature in your mouth. At first you may not like the taste, but don't worry, it will grow on you. You will then simply swash around the coconut oil in your mouth and let it reach all corners of your mouth. Most guides refer to an advice 10 to 15 minutes of oil pulling for it to have the wanted effects. I personally never followed these guidelines and simply did it at my leisure for anywhere between 5 to 10 minutes, sometimes even twice a day if I wanted to. After you've done it for as long as you want or feel you need to, you can dispose of the coconut oil. This is important, as the coconut oil will also supposedly pull out toxins through the gums and oral tissues. Make sure to rinse your mouth with lukewarm water afterwards to get rid of all the coconut oil residues. Word of caution, do not dispose of the coconut oil in your sink as it will harden when below room temperature and it can clog up the pipes. Another word of caution, if you value your plants or garden, do not dispose of your coconut oil near your beloved plants and garden beauties. You might think this is excessive, but I have by accident actually killed plants by doing this. Fifthly, you could use an essential teeth oil mixture. These oils contain specific herbal traces and strengthen and rebuild your teeth. They are especially aimed at protecting, restoring and perhaps even rebuilding the enamel. If you have teeth like mine, where some of them have eroded to the point where the top layer of enamel is showing, you might want to consider these oils. I have personally found them to be very effective and above all soothing. To summarize, you want to evaluate your body and its organs and tissues. Major organs to specifically address are the kidneys and the liver. It is also wise to examine other organs and glands you might suspect of being below proper function. It is also imperative to support your gallbladder with daily essential fatty acids and to properly take care of your teeth if you do not desire to have that middle-aged three-tooth smile going on after going the distance. Getting a juicer. Now that we have established how to support your organs of elimination, have evaluated what going the distance means, and have gone over the purpose and the definition of a juice fest, it is time to actually look at juice extractor machines. From now on, we will call this a juicer. When deciding upon a juicer, we must first distinguish between the different types of juicers. There are two main categories, namely slow juicers and non-slow juicers. Slow juicers run at a low rounds per minute, meaning that they spin at a very low speed, which creates less heat and thus preserves more nutrients and produces far less oxidation of the juice. Non-slow juicers spin at a far higher round per minute, meaning that they spin at a very high speed and will create more heat and thus more nutritional loss and more oxidation. You can of course already tell that the slow juicer is a far more superior machine when compared to a non-slow juicer when it comes to doing a juice fest. However, as we will soon discover, not all slow juicers are created equally. There are, in general, three types of juicers that are very popular. These are centrifugal, masticating and trituturating juicers. There are many arguments to be made for all of these different types of systems and ways of extracting juice. The centrifugal juicer. In the centrifugal juicer, a mesh chamber with sharp teeth stretch the materials into pulp. At the same time, the machine spins at a very high speed to separate the juice and the pulp. An example of a centrifugal juicer would be the Breville JE98XL Juice Fountain Plus 850 Watt Juice Extractor. Indeed, that is quite a mouthful. Most centrifugal juicers work best with harder fruits and vegetables, such as apples or carrots or sweet potatoes. Centrifugal juicers are the fastest juicers out of the three and they generally have a large feeding chute 
allowing for bigger items and less pre-cutting work to be done. They are generally easier to assemble, disassemble and clean and are usually far cheaper than actual slow juicing machines. You might now start to wonder, why would I even consider the other types of juicers? Well, here it comes. Although they are relatively easier to use, allow for less preparation time and are usually cheaper, they also spin at a huge 3000 to 10,000 RPM. This creates significant noise and above all quite some heat over time, meaning that the juice will have less nutrition and enzymes than compared to other juicers. The speed also results in far quicker oxidation and bubbles. This leads to another big drawback of the centrifugal juicer, namely that storing juice extracted by this machine will separate and go bad far quicker than with slow juicers. When doing a juice fast, it is imperative that we consume the highest possible quality of juice with the most amount of nutrition and enzymes and, when possible, be able to store it over a longer times of up to 24 hours when need be. A slow juicer can provide these aspects out of the box, whereas a centrifugal juicer at best will struggle to produce the same results. However, when practicality rules the overall course of action, a centrifugal juicer will still get the job done. You must, however, be able to bypass its shortcomings with a good juicing schedule. This would mainly entail drinking all of your juices fresh and straight out of the machine, without storing them, or finding ways of prolonging storage life, which we will go over in chapter 2. This would also mean investigating which produce works best with the limitations of the centrifugal juicer. The masticating juicer. The masticating juicer has an auger that works to crush the fruits and vegetables after they pass through the chute. It will then separate the pulp and the juice slowly by squeezing the produce together. The juice then runs through a mesh while the pulp is being pushed into a separate container, usually by leaving the machine through an exit at the front or the sides. An example of a masticating juicer would be the Omega J8008C Ultimate Juicer and Nutrition System, a slightly more subtle name than the Breville previously mentioned. Masticating juicers have, in general, more parts and require more work to assemble, disassemble and clean than a typical centrifugal juicer. Their feeding chute is overall smaller and more narrow than a centrifugal juicer, meaning that it will require more preparation and more pre-cutting before your produce will fit into the machine. The masticating juicer falls into the slow juicer category and, true to its name, takes much longer than a centrifugal juicer to process the produce you feed to it. You might start to ponder, this doesn't really sound like a good deal compared to the centrifugal juicer. Well, the following will make you think otherwise. Masticating juicers run at a 40 to 100 RPM which compared to the centrifugal juicers is more than a hundred times slower. They produce very little noise and very little to no heat. This will preserve nutrients to the highest possible levels whilst also producing superior yield. The masticating juicers are in general made of far better materials and offer a superior quality of juice. In contrast to a centrifugal juicer, they handle both hard materials and softer ones such as leafy greens or for example grapes. The juice quality is high and rich in nutrients and can be stored up to or even beyond 24 hours in a fridge, depending on what machine you get. Masticating juicers are more expensive, but very versatile in their capabilities. Many masticating juicers can also work as food processors or grinders. Therefore, they also come with more parts. Although their price is higher, it is recommended to get a slow juicer. The superior yield, quality of juice, and abilities to handle all ranges of produce very well are of significant importance when doing a proper juice fast. There are ways to reduce the price when purchasing a slow juicer, but we will get to that in a short bit. The Trituturating Juicer The Trituturating Juicer, or more commonly known as a twin gear juicer, has two gears that are assembled very close to each other. When the produce goes into the machine via the chute, the gears rotate to crush and grind it into very small particles, and then extract the juice, pushing out very dry pulp at the front. For the sake of my comfort, we will call this machine a twin gear juicer from now on, as tritutorating is a word of nightmarish pronunciation for me. An example of a twin gear juicer would be the TriBest Greenstar Elite GSE 5000 Jumbo Twin Gear Complete Masticating Juicer. From the name alone, you can easily conclude that this machine will require a more hefty payment. I wonder when one of these juice machine manufacturers will start calling their machines the Alpha, Omega, Extreme, Elite, Apex, Predator, Widowmaker, Juice Extractor 7000. But I digress. Twin gear juicers have in general more parts, comparable to masticating juicers, as they basically still are mastication juicers, but with two augers. The twin gear juicers require roughly the same work to assemble, disassemble and clean as a masticating juicer. 
Their feeding chute is overall smaller and more narrow, just as a masticating juicer meaning that it will require more preparation and more pre-cutting before your produce will fit into the machine. However, a twin gear juicer rarely discriminates the material it is confronted with. It juices hard roots and leafy greens, just as superb as it does common fruits. These machines are exceptionally good at separating the liquid from the hard fibers, such as apples, carrots, or sweet potatoes. However, they do shine with softer foods such as melons and watermelons as well. Depending on what machine you get, soft fruits such as grapes or oranges can be somewhat problematic as it can clog up the machine. However, tricks such as using a harder fruit or vegetable in combination with a softer fruit such as grapes can solve this trick in the blink of an eye. Twin gear juicers twist at a speed of 80 to 100 RPM, which is generally slightly higher than that of a single gear masticating juicer. As a result of their lower speed and twin gear system, the juice made is of superb quality and the yield is immense. Their nutrient and enzyme preservation is superior to that of most masticating juicers, and their juices can be stored for a long time without separating or going bad. Some twin gear juice manufacturers claim their juices can be stored of up to 72 hours when cooled, but I've yet to achieve this myself. The twin gear juicers are made of superior materials and offer a superior quality of juice compared to a centrifugal and even most masticating juicers. Some twin gear juicers, such as the Green Star Elite, even have magnetic gears, which supposedly restructure the juice and its compounds to offer a more superior juice and storing capability. Twin gear juicers are more expensive, but very versatile in their capabilities. They have many different parts and can, for example, make noodles, grind nuts and seeds, and for example, chop vegetables. Although their price is higher, it is recommended to get a slow juicer as previously mentioned. The superior yield quality of juice and abilities to handle all ranges of produce very well are of significant importance when doing a proper juice fast. Since I do not personally advise to get a centrifugal juicer to any of my clients or people I have advised through their juice fasts, I will not do it here either. But as previously mentioned, practicality must rule above all. If you need to be on food stamps for 6 months in order to buy a slow juicer, then it would of course not be advisable to do so. As previously mentioned, there are many ways to reduce the price of a slow juicer significantly, to the point where they rival or even best the prices of a new centrifugal juicer. I am sure you have guessed it by now, but buying second-hand or used is a superb way of getting a quality slow juicer for a lower price. You will be amazed at how many second-hand juicers or used juicers there are out there, especially slow juicers. We all know some people who will fall into the following category. One day they explain their crusade for health and longevity and spend huge amounts of money on expensive machines or products that will help them in their pursuit of impulsiveness. A mere month or two later, these expensive purchasers are collecting dust on a dimly lit shelf. These are exactly the machines you want to be on the lookout for. I have myself purchased a few of such machines for prices I would not have dreamt of to be possible in my wildest dreams. To make matters even better, these machines are rarely used and quite often in pristine condition. I have, for example, bought a Green Star Elite for a friend in Austria for 225 euros and it was in superb condition. In comparison to the price of a new machine, this is a 61% discount. I regularly check used and second-hand websites for juicers for my clients or people in need of a juicer and I have seen many of such machines offered at such prices and sometimes even lower. A friend of mine in America found a second-hand Green Star Lead in superb condition for $200. And we have not even begun to talk about the hundreds or even possible thousands of Omega single gear masticating juicers floating around on used and second-hand sites for less than $200 or euros. Although I am very happy with my Green Star Elite juicer that I bought completely new for my juice fasting, I might as well have bought it second hand and spent the leftover money on good quality produce. Before we move on towards other subjects, I would like to touch up on service and warranty on juicers. When you buy a cheap machine, like for example a cheap centrifugal juicer, you will also get inferior customer service and warranty. To illustrate my point in the most compressed form possible, Omega has some of the best customer servers when it comes to replacing parts or entire juicers. And you merely have to email or call them in order to receive a new part or ship them your juicer and have it repaired. TryBest, the company behind Green Star Juicers, offers anywhere between 12 to 18 years of warranty, depending on where you live. This confidence of companies in their products is a telltale sign of quality. For only a fool would offer the best of customer service and warranty for a product that breaks as soon as the curtains open on the second day after purchase. Establishing a budget and determining produce sources. When having bought a juicer and you have determined when your juice fast will start, it is time to get a grip on a couple of practical matters and research and plan them wisely. 
It goes without saying that before you start your juice fast, you will first have to familiarize yourself with your juicer. It is advisable to use it a couple of times before you start your juice fast. This way you will be able to practice assembling, disassembling and even cleaning it. I remember the first time I had to put my green star juicer together. It took me a couple of minutes to figure it out. Practicing this way makes you more comfortable with your machine and it will also make sure that you know its capabilities and possible limitations. When I bought my green star juicer I was riding clouds and thinking of the galaxies I was about to enlighten during my juice fast. However, when I tried oranges and grapes, I was soon slapped by reality. Had I not tried these fruits beforehand and had I not known of the limitations of my machine in handling this type of produce and clogging up easily from them, I could have made my life very hard when jumping into a juice fest. It is also of high importance to figure out what type of yield your juicer produces when using different types of produce. It is advisable to write down at first how much you need of a specific fruit and vegetable in order to get a specific amount of juice. You might be surprised by some of the results. I remember putting a small watermelon in my green star and being amazed at how much juice this yielded. However, when I put in some spinach, I was taken aback. This machine is green in its name, yet the spinach hardly yielded a lot of juice. But then I put some cucumber and kale in there and I was again amazed at how much yield the machine provided. It is therefore of great importance that you figure out the subtleties and details of your juicer and its yields before you embark upon your life-changing juice fast. This will eventually save you a lot of time when deciding how much produce you need to buy in order to provide you with the quantity of juice you need on a daily basis. Now that you have established what your juicer loves and perhaps despises, and how much it will yield based on the produce you provide it with, it is time to establish a budget and sources of produce. When establishing a budget, it is decisive that you know what your juicer yields. If you do not know this, then establishing a realistic and accurate budget can be very hard to say the least. Establishing what your budget must be depends heavily on where you live, what you will juice, and its availability and price. However, a couple of basic guidelines can be made to ensure a more or less budget-friendly juice fast. Firstly, it is important to juice produce according to season. Whatever is in season depends on your region. However, when something is in season, in your region, it usually means it will originate from your region or close to it. I, for example, currently live in Northern Europe. Trying to juice watermelons and papayas in late autumn and winter is quite frankly impossible, and the quickest route to financial ruin would I choose to personally import these. However, in autumn and winter, I have a huge local supply of grapes, apples, kale, spinach, carrots, beets, and for example, different types of roots. Since this produce is in season and locally grown, it will be cheaper to buy them in the bulk needed. This will also ensure quality is better, since the produce is grown within its season and relatively close to my location. Secondly, it is important to establish relationships with specific retailers or produce providers. I, for example, frequent specific organic supermarkets and markets regularly, and I did so during my first juice fast. I approached the managers or owners of these providers and explained that I was doing a juice fast and I needed larger quantities of produce with specific produce in mind. Most of the time, it is possible to order produce in bulk from them and often for a cheaper price. In my case, as with many others I've spoken to, this was indeed the case. Retailers and or produce providers will start to love the relationship they have with you as you provide them with a regular stream of orders and income, which means they will start to show initiative themselves. I cannot count how many times I entered the organic supermarket during my first juice fast with the sole purpose of getting a few little things here and there without making any type of order and they stored a crate of watermelons or grapes for me in the back. Not to mention how many times they would give me a special discount or even specific produce for free. Thirdly, and this is perhaps one of the biggest budget-friendly options when they are present, visit farmer markets. Farmer markets are perhaps one of the best ways of getting local and fresh produce. In my region, there are only a couple of small farmer markets, which are always called organic markets, but I've heard of farmer markets aplenty in Asia, North America, Southern and Central Europe, and many other places. These farmer markets are usually occupied by loving and caring farmers or growers who provide superb quality produce for a very reasonable price. But the real bang to be made with farmer markets is to use a very lucrative but simple strategy. It is so simple that most people never think of it. Simply approach these farmers and explain that you want to buy produce in bulk. Ask them if they have any produce that is too fresh or not looking that appealing anymore to be sold. Most of the time they have heaps of this laying around and they would tell you to come in half an hour before closing time. You can then pick and choose the best produce out of this heap or produce they would otherwise have to discard of. This strategy alone has saved many juicers quite a sum of money. 
And fourthly, and this ties into the farmer markets as well, do not focus too much on organic or inorganic. Rather, focus on quality of produce. Although a lot of arguments can and must be made for the importance of organic produce, it does not always mean that organic produce is the best choice in your region. Where I live, in Northern Europe, organic produce is on a leak of its own. It is far superior to inorganic produce in all but a few cases. However, I have traveled a great deal within Europe and have visited many different countries. In these travels, I concluded that there was so-called inorganic produce that was far superior to anything organic I could find in my own country. The realization dawned on me that some farmers simply can't afford the organic label on their produce, but they still raise their produce as good as organic or perhaps even better than those with a label. Although I would advise anyone to look for organic vegetables at all times, as the amount of pesticides and chemicals on most inorganic vegetables is mind-shatteringly high and the nutrient imbalance in the soil yields nutrient-deficient produce, I would also advise you to look for the best quality produce in your area. With these four guidelines, you can make your juice fast cheaper, more enjoyable and above all more practical. Once you have established what is in season, you can effectively use the different resources and distributors at your disposal to make your juice fast as enjoyable and practical as possible. Chapter 2. Getting started. How much to juice and setting up a juicing schedule. How much to drink. Before we get into the details of what you can drink and what the possible options during a juice fast are, we are going to look at what you need to do in order to meet your caloric requirements. To make it quite clear, you need to meet your caloric requirements each day. This isn't only applicable to juice fasting, but to eating as well. If you do not meet your caloric needs, you risk having low energy or risk losing your lean body mass, in essence, your muscle mass. This is the last thing you want to happen on a juice fast, so I will emphasize it again. You will need to meet your caloric requirements each day. Having made my point clear, we will now look at what these caloric needs are and how we are able to meet them. The minimal amount of daily calories required will depend on your basal metabolic rate. This basically means the amount of calories you will burn when doing absolutely nothing all day while lying on the couch, contemplating why you still haven't done anything. This caloric requirement can vary from person to person depending on gender, height, muscle mass, body composition of multiple dimensions, and of course age. There are ways of calculating this caloric need, which mainly consists of websites using specific formulas to calculate the caloric needs based on the information you provide them with, or scales that measure your body on different dimensions, and thus providing you with an estimated basal metabolic rate. To make it quite clear, these are all estimations and never set in stone. It is advisable to use a couple of different websites and take the average of those, or use a scale a couple of times and take the average of those weigh-ins if those conclude any different results at all in that regard. However, to give a general rough guideline, and I emphasize rough guideline with the greatest possible exclamation mark, men should aim for a minimal intake of 15 to 1800 calories, and women should aim for a minimal intake of 12 to 1500 calories. Again, these calories are the minimal calories you need in order to cover your basal metabolic rate. Based on your activity, you will add calories to meet your energetic demands. Now that you have established what you roughly need to cover your basal metabolic rate, you will need to determine what you need to drink in order to match the calories and your requirements. The rule of thumb is that you drink a minimum of 4 liters, or quarts, or 1 gallon of juice daily, regardless of what type of juice you drink. You might ask, why is this important to drink at least 4 liters of juice, or quarts, or 1 gallon a day? Good question. We will go to that in more detail in just a bit. However, it is advisable and of great importance to cover your basal metabolic caloric needs with these four liters of juice. Some juices have less calories than others. Four liters of cucumber juice, for example, will yield significantly lower calories than four liters of grapes or oranges. It is therefore of high importance that you determine which calorie-rich juices you will drink to cover your caloric needs. On a side note, it is also of great importance to cover your caloric and nutritious needs in order to keep cravings at bay. You will crave what you are made out of, and you will crave whatever is stored in your body. Whenever you don't consume enough juices to cover what you need on a daily basis, you will of course start to feed your cravings. Cravings are a hard thing to deal with for some people, but drinking more than enough juice on a daily basis will help you to deal with them better. Another aspect of cravings is that they last, in general, no more than 5 minutes. They are an impulsive affair, which most people act on without thinking. When confronted with the craving, it is best to acknowledge it for what it is, a short but intense, temporary impulse that will subside. 
A good course of action is to simply drink juice whenever a craving shows its crooked nose around the corner. Another way to slap cravings back into the abyss once they came from is to simply acknowledge the specific food you crave and think of the smell and unpleasant sights of the things that come out of you. Mentally link the two and use the memories of all your senses to imagine the two being the same thing. You will be amazed at how successful this tactic is because when you smell cooked food, you smell the demons. All right, let's get back to drinking four liters and covering your caloric needs. Once you start moving, exercising, or doing anything active, you will need to add more juice in order to meet your higher caloric requirements. Drinking too much is a hard objective for any avid juice faster, but drinking too little is a short way to feeling energetically purged and miserable. A useful website to roughly keep track of calories, and I emphasize roughly by the widest of margins, is called juicerecipes.com. This website allows you to enter your produce in grams and it will then calculate and show you an estimation of how many calories and nutrients you get from your juices. These estimations are general calculations and do not take into account different juicers and their quality and yield. Not to mention the wide variety of quality of different produce. But still, it is a very handy website when in need of a rough estimation and some numbers to go by. You might now begin to wonder, well, what am I supposed to drink then to cover my basal metabolic rate in these 4 liters or quarts or 1 gallon of juice? The answer to this question is calorie-dense juices. Produce that produces calorie-rich juices are as follows, but not limited to oranges, grapes, apples, carrots, sweet potatoes. These juices will easily provide plenty of calories to cover your basal metabolic rate on a daily basis. But depending on whether you are a woman or a man, you can choose other options too, such as melons or watermelon. The juicer you use will heavily determine the yield, quality of juice, and of course the caloric content. To give some examples, 4 liters of watermelon juice will yield you roughly 1200 calories, while 4 liters of orange juice will come in at around 1800 calories. 4 liters of grape juice will give you a whopping 2400 calories, whilst 4 liters of apple juice will give you close to 1900 calories. And 4 liters of carrot juice, for example, will give you roughly 1500 calories respectively. It doesn't take a genius to figure out that once you start mixing these juices with each other, you can make delicious recipes that pack a nutritional and caloric punch. You might now start to wonder, but what about vegetable juices? Indeed, vegetable juices are a thing, and they are amazing juices with immense nutritional values. It is advisable to add a liter or two, a quart or two, or half a gallon, of vegetable juices to your daily regimen on top of your four liters or quarts or a gallon of calorically dense juices. Vegetable juices to consider are carrots, cucumbers, spinach, celery, kale, beets, sweet potatoes, arugula for a nice punchy taste, bell peppers, one of my favorites, tomatoes, and the list goes on. Whatever you like, add it to your juices. This way you ensure a higher protein intake and more nutrients and minerals. For some amongst us, the taste of vegetable juices is like being touched by every incarnation of every angel that ever existed in every possible dimension. If this is the case for you, then gulp down as many liters of vegetable juices as you like, whilst making sure you get enough calorically dense juices in you as well to cover your needs. Enjoy yourself with them and drink as much variety as you like. But, for some amongst us, and I am included in this category, vegetable juices do not taste that appealing. At first, this was sort of a problem for me as I relied heavily upon fruit juices to do the heavy lifting. But rejoice, for I have good news. It is very easy to juice vegetables without actually having their taste dominate any of your juices or rise higher than a faint slither of subtleties. When drinking any type of fruit juice, you can easily mix in your vegetable juices without having their taste be dominant or sometimes even noticeable. The best approach to this is keeping a ratio where you have 60% fruit juice and 40% vegetable juice at the most in a liter. Combinations I personally prefer are apple and carrot, apple, carrot, spinach, apple, carrot, spinach and red bell pepper, or for example grapes, carrots, spinach, cucumber and celery. You can of course choose combinations as you please. These juice combinations provide calories as well as nutrients providing a best of both worlds scenario when it comes to meeting calories and nutrients daily. Now is also a good time to touch upon the different effects that fruit and vegetable juices have on the body. In general, fruit juices are more aggressive when it comes to cleansing, especially the astringent fruit juices. In contrast, vegetable juices provide a smoother ride and allow for a less severe cleansing. When you have damaged kidneys or a damaged liver, or for example diabetes, it is advisable to drink more vegetable juices or primarily vegetable juices. This way you burn your organs and your body to a far lesser degree than you would with fruit juices. 
Eventually, when your body is being hydrated and then cleansed at a slower rate, you will be able to handle more of the fruit juices. It is very important to listen to your body when it comes to this aspect. If fruit juices make you feel great, by all means drink them. If vegetable juices make you fall in love with everything that is green, by all means drink them. However, if you can't handle fruit juice or it makes you feel uneasy or gives you severe cleansing reactions, simply enlarge the ratio of vegetables to fruit juices or eliminate fruit juices for the time being. Previously, we touched upon the importance of drinking a minimum of 4 liters or quarts or 1 gallon of juice and it being advisable to cover your basal metabolic rate with these primary 4 liters of juice. There is, however, another reason for drinking a minimum of 4 liters a day, and when possible, drinking even more than that. As previously mentioned, one of the purposes of a juice fast is to rehydrate the uneliminated waste matter in the digestive tract, so that it can be pooped out of the body. In effect, the more juice you drink on a daily basis, the faster this uneliminated waste matter will get rehydrated and reach critical mass. When it reaches critical mass, it has absorbed so much juice that it reaches a specific weight, it will start to break off and be flushed out towards the nearest exit, and I don't think I will need to explain which one that will be. It will then be able to be pooped out of you. It is therefore of high importance that you drink as much juice as you possibly can with your available budget and physical capabilities. The more you drink, the faster your progress in getting your digestive tract cleaned out will be. Of course, you will still have to take practicality into consideration. If you can comfortably drink 5 to 6 liters a day and make good progress on that, then by all means do so. If you experience exceptional progress on 4 liters, it can still be worth a shot to try 5 or 6 liters and see how phenomenal your progress could be. There is another element that is linked to drinking more juice, namely that your body will receive more nutrition and hydration. This can then be used to rehydrate the body and its tissues, as well as provide the organs with much needed assistance. The last element linked to vegetable juices is that of fat intake. As previously mentioned, the gallbladder needs about 10 grams of fat a day in order to dump its wastes. When you drink enough vegetable juices, say 2 liters or 2 quarts or half a gallon or more daily, you will be able, in most cases, to get the 10 grams of fat you need. This is however dependent on what type of vegetable juices you drink. It is still advisable, however, to take a daily essential fatty acid supplement, such as hemp or flax oil. One tablespoon a day will be sufficient and you can take this by itself or in your juice. Some people might not like the taste of the oils in their juices, so they can either drink more vegetable juices or disperse the one tablespoon of oil in small amounts amongst their juices, nullifying the taste somewhat. Men can take either hemp or flax oil. While it is advisable for women to take hemp oil due to it containing the proper omega-3 and 6 ratios for women. So, to summarize, you will need to figure out your basal metabolic rate and determine which juices you need to drink with your primary 4 liters to cover your caloric needs. From there on, you will add juices and thus calories and nutrients based on your physical activity. It is still advisable to add at least 1 to 2 liters of vegetable juices on top of your 4 liters of primary juice. It is also advisable to drink 5 to 6 liters daily in order to improve the rehydration of your body, its tissues and organs and the uneliminated waste matter in your digestive tract. Juicing Schedule When you start your juice fast, you will notice a few things straight away. Firstly, you will notice that it takes quite some time to prepare and make all your juices, especially when you are not at home during the day. Secondly, it takes a few days to get used to drinking a, with lack of better term, liquid diet with 5 to 6 liters of juice. The volume is something you almost like to need to get used to. Thirdly, you will notice that buying a lot of produce is something that you will need to fit into your schedule on a regular basis. We will go over these aspects and some others one by one. When starting your juice fast, you will notice straight away that you will prefer a specific drinking schedule. Some people like to drink the entire day, whilst others don't like to drink before noon. Whatever type of drinking preference you have, make sure to cover a few basic principles in this regard. When you start drinking later on in the day, you will also have less time to drink all your juices, unless of course you don't go to bed until the sun is about to rise from behind the horizon. When you drink on a tighter juicing schedule, you will be inclined to drink your juices quicker and with less time in between juices. This can become problematic as drinking your juices too fast can cause them to move through your system too quickly and can result in peeing a lot. It is best to avoid this if possible. Make sure to preferably have at least one and a half to two hours in between your juices in order to make sure that they are able to be assimilated properly before another juice comes through. Drink your juices with care and mind not to drink them too quickly. When the juices are in your mouth, they mix with enzymes and thus are more easily utilized by the body. Speaking of peeing, 
be sure to drink your last juice some hours before bedtime, or you risk the nuisance of waking up a couple of times at night to go pee. Although I was personally never really bothered by this, it can be annoying to some. Preparing your juices can take quite some time, and unfortunately, not everyone has the luxury to just make a liter on the fly and drink it straight away. Some people have families to run, children to fetch, jobs to drive to, and so on and so forth. It is therefore advisable to set up some sort of daily juicing schedule in regards to preparation, whereas you plan out the days where you are out and about. This will save you plenty of worries and will allow you to enjoy those days of juicing as well. I personally like to plan out my days the evening before, whenever I had to go travel for the job I had during my first juice fast. This usually entailed two trips by train and plenty of walking and cycling. For me this meant getting up earlier, preparing three to four liters to take with me and storing them in a proper way to prevent oxidation. I would then make a liter to drink whilst on my way to the train by bicycle. This way I prepared for the days that were to come and I would minimize the possible stress or anxiety for a day I might otherwise not have been able to deal with properly. However, if you are always in the position to make your juices fresh out of the machine and drink them straight away, then it is advisable to do so for the majority of your juices, as you will have the best quality. But then again, a strong argument can be made for making all your daily juices straight away in the morning, as to prevent further juicing time throughout the day. A quick side note on cleaning your juicer. When I began to talk to many other juice fasters and started coaching people, I noticed that they developed this habit of completely cleaning their juicer after every single juicing session. I never understood this, as I would simply run some water through my juicer after every single juicing session. This would clean the juicer sufficiently and remove any residue or pulp from the machine and allow me to continue juicing throughout the day without having to spend a lot of time cleaning my machine. A strategy perhaps worth to keep in mind yourself. Speaking on the subject of properly storing your juices, whenever you make juice and need to store it, it is highly advisable to store them in big liter jars or 32 ounce mason jars. You can of course also use half liter jars or 16 ounce mason jars. This way you can easily measure how many liters or quarts or gallons you drink throughout the day. Another benefit is that you can store them in a way that makes sure there is the least of oxidation over time. When pouring your juice in the mason jar, make sure to fill it up all the way to the top so that when you screw on the lid, you have a little spillage running over the sides. This will ensure that there will be no or as little air as possible inside the mason jar. This will prevent or severely slow down oxidation of your juices, which when left to run amok, will make your juices go bad quickly. Another good tip to preserve your juices for longer is to add lemon or lime juice to it. These are natural preservatives and work wonders for keeping juices fresh over longer periods of time. When we speak of drinking 5 to 6 liters a day, it can take a few days to get used to drinking that kind of volume of juice. I personally needed about 3 to 4 days during my first juice fast to get used to drinking juice all day. However, after that, I haven't had any issue with drinking a big quantity of juice ever since. If you truly struggle with getting in more juices than 3 to 4 liters, which some women for example experience, then it is a possibility to slowly up your juice intake every day or every other day with for example 200 milliliters. This way you will slowly get used to drinking more over a controlled period of time. Some people also like to drink water during their juice fast. There is nothing wrong with drinking water. However, do not let it come in the way of drinking more juice since this is what provides you with calories and nutrients. The same goes for drinking teas. Lastly, when drinking 5 to 6 liters a day, you will require quite some produce. As previously mentioned, there are many ways and sources when it comes to acquiring produce. It is advisable to have a stable supply and stock of fresh produce in your residence at all times. This way you can easily top the supply off a couple of set times a week. This way you will never get in trouble when you aren't able to find a specific produce for a day or two. If you are able to go look for produce every day, then by all means do. This is the strategy I used throughout all my juice fasts and the one I advise my clients to use as well. It saves time and prevents you from worrying whenever you can't find something for a day or two. I call this my base stash so to speak and I would simply top this off two to three times a week. This is the end of chapter two and the end of the informational part of this video. Closing thoughts. With concluding chapter two, we will conclude part one of this video series. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something from it. As previously mentioned, if you have any questions or anything to add, then you can do so in the comments. There will also be a pinned comment with links to my website, where you can find offerings for coaching if you need support on your raw food lifestyle or juice fasting. There will also be links to specific content I refer to in this video and other useful links and details. In the next video, we will go over two more chapters, chapter three 
we'll discuss moving the bowels, moving the body, and moving the mind. Chapter 4 will deal with possible social isolation and mental detox. I will try to upload this video as soon as possible, but as you can imagine, writing and recording the chapters as well as shooting the accompanying video imagery will take some time. I hope you have a wonderful day and may the juice be with you.